Hey there, this is Akshit Madan. Welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we are going to study Docker. So I'm not saying that after watching this uh, 10 to 12 minutes video, you are going to become a master of Docker or you will be an expert of Docker. This video is just to introduce you to the Docker, right? So we are going to have a basic introduction of Docker. Why we need Docker? What is Docker? What is the significance of Docker? And at what point of your technical life you are going to use this Docker? Right. So I say that whether you are a front end developer, you are a back end developer, you are a microservices expert, you're a DevOps expert or whatever you do, but you build apps or you build softwares at some point of life, you are going to use this Docker to transfer your application or to send your application from one computer to another. Right. So this is the first key point. So in this definition only or in this introduction only, uh, I've given you first key point that this Docker is going to be useful when you will be transferring your app or your software or your service or anything that you have built on your computer from your computer to another computer, right? So this is the first point. Let me write it down. Transferring your app, your service or any software, right? From one computer, to another. So this is the use case or this is the scenario or you can say that whenever this thing is happening, then you are going to use Docker. So you can see that Docker logo. This is the Docker logo, right? This looks like a ship and there are certain containers uh, that are there in this ship. That means something is moving from one computer to another computer in this technical world or in this scenario, right? So let's say this is your computer or this is your computer number one and this is your second computer, right? So my ship or this ship or this Docker is taking something or we can say the containers from one computer to another computer. Let's take one more example. Let's say you built one application in your computer. Let's say you built a flask service. So let's say you created a service, right? That service can be in Python. So if you're creating a Python service, that can be a flask app, that can be a Django app, or let's say you created a service in Node.js Express, Right. So that is going to be a JavaScript project, right? So let's say you created a flask service or a flask server. So that project is going to be a dot Python project, right? Python files will be there. So that is going to be a Python project. Or let's say you created a Node.js Express JS server, or you created a simple microservice or simple service or simple server in Node.js and Express JS. So that is going to be a dot JS, or you can say that that can be a dot TypeScript or dot JavaScript project, right? Now you created this project in your computer. So I can say that this this project lies in your computer. This is your computer. Now, next day you have to take this service or take this application, take this project to your office computer or to your school computer or to your college computer so that you can run your application there in front of the professor, in front of your boss, in front of your colleagues or in front of your friends, right? Now what happened is, okay, you took all the files, you took all the project and you zipped it or you pushed it on GitHub. And next day when you went there, you downloaded that or you un uh, you uh, extracted that zip or you opened that project and you tried to run it. It's failing. That's very embarrassing, right? That you created a complete project. It was running on your computer. It was running on your local machine, local server. And next day when you, are, you took that same code, that same exact code and you tried to run it on someone else's computer, it's failing. That's very, very embarrassing. So to handle this situation, when one app or when one uh, software or when one code piece of code is running on one computer and it's not running on another computer, that's very time consuming and that's wastage of time, right? But what is the problem? Why it's working on your computer and why it's not working on another computer? Because maybe you had Python uh, 2.7 and your friend's computer or any other computer is having the latest one, Python 3.8 or Python 3.7, right? This can actually create an issue, right? Python, uh, Python version is only different. Or let's say you, uh, you are using Flask version 0 0.x something, Flask, uh, Flask library package. And on your friend's computer or on another computer, it was something 0 0.y or some, some, someone uh, like some other version, right? So this can also create a issue. In the same way, all the libraries or all the packages, right? on which your software depends, on which your server depends, the, ser the version number may vary, right? 
so that can actually create an issue because some things can be deprecated or some things can be removed from in the updated versions or in the last versions right so this actually creates a problem when you try to run the same piece of code on someone else's computer and we don't want this hassle or we don't want this problem in our life right so what docker does is it creates a image right so i'm i'm now moving ahead with a third keyword right image it creates an image what is what is an image like why we are using this word image right so let's say uh, the computer or that um, software was running at some instance let's say it was running like it was a python file and it was running so what does this image mean so it it means that someone is going to take a photo of this instance or it is going to take a photo of your running thing and this photo means that it has taken all the instances or all the version numbers of all the libraries that you are uh, on which your software depends right so it now knows that this image the image that we have taken it's not like a i'm taking a screenshot don't confuse uh, with that scenario it means that we am taking i'm capturing the scenario i'm capturing this situation right now this image contains or it contains all the information about all the libraries that on which my uh, software depends it 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 now it knows that my it uses python 2.7 it uses flask 0.x or if, if this is a machine learning application or a computer vision application it may depend on open cv version 0.a uh, or something right now it knows now this image knows now what if i just give this image to someone else i say that don't don't install python on your computer or don't install flask on your computer don't install open cv on computer just take this image and run it right so just take this image and try to run it on your computer right this is someone else computer just take this image and just run it right so this this transfer transfer of image is happened using docker docker actually enables this transfer of images right now another computer if it if it if it is not having python that's totally fine if it is not having open cv that's totally fine if it, if the person has not installed flask that's also fine right so this is enabled by docker that it is going to make a container it is going to it is going to make a image of the working software in which all the libraries all the packages all the version are there and it is given to someone else and now someone else can run your software very easily because now it is using the exact same versions of all the libraries and all the packages and all the softwares right so this is the work of docker right fourth keyword that i want to let you know is docker file docker file what is this docker file now i just told that it is going to uh, record all the information about this python version flask version open cv version but we need to store it somewhere right so we write this down in this docker file or docker file also consist of all the steps that we need to perform on someone else computer because because someone else computer is just, just like a new environment right and we need to go there and make our virtual environment make our environment so that our app can run over there right so what are the steps so what are the steps of um, running a python so python app or a flask app first of all we need to pip install all the libraries right so this is number one step or first of all before that we need to create an empty python project right and we need to copy all the files that my flask app needs in that empty folder so that can be number one step second step is i want to install i or, 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 or i want to pip install all the python libraries in that project right then i need to run my flask service or python app.py python app.py if the app.py is my main file right so these are all the steps now all these steps and all these versions are recorded in this docker file and we can and we also send this docker file to someone else computer and this docker file consists of all these steps now all these steps can be performed on that computer and my flask app is going to run so this is like automating stuff docker devops kubernetes all about automation right so this over here we are automating our uh, deployment or, or automating our running of the application running of our softwares right so this is all about automation now next thing that you should be knowing in the introduction of docker is docker hub what is this docker hub so you know what is docker hub docker hub is like a port or you know what is a port port is where all the ships are docked right where all the ships are parked right 
this is like a so docker hub is also like a port right where all the ships are parked and whenever you want you can utilize that ship or utilize that container right so what is a docker hub docker hub is actually a place or it's a it's a portal it's a web portal i'll just show you where everyone can upload their images and you can pull those images whenever you need it so let's take an example i just like giving example that's actually make learning easy so let's say you created a flask app let's say this flask app is a machine learning application or it's a deep learning application which takes which takes an image it takes an image and it takes a jpg image and converts this jpg image into a png image right so this is like a small service that you have built you have built this small server right now this is a small service now what you will do is you will create an image of this service of this flask app and you will upload this image to docker hub to docker hub now next time if someone else let's say someone else in the world wants to utilize the same thing utilize the same application and wants to add something on his own he doesn't need to code that same uh, service again right he can directly pull your image so now this image is uh, uploaded to docker hub or you can say that this image is parked in docker hub like a port ship port and someone else can just pull this image pull this image and he or she can utilize that image in, in his or her own computer now when we you will say that okay the github is also doing the same thing right so yes the code will be uploaded to github but in github os level virtualization is not happening github will just take your python files right but docker in addition to that it doesn't take your python it does it not only takes your python files it also takes an instance of all the libraries and all the os uh, operating system and everything that your project needs to run successfully right so that's the difference between github and docker right you're not just uploading your code you're uploading all the dependencies that your code needs that your project needs right now someone else will not face any problem in running your code now he or she can utilize your this service and he can create his own addition on top of the service right so this is called docker hub now let me show you docker hub so this is docker hub you can actually uh, log in over here now i'm not going to log in and just going to show you explore just click on explore and you can see all the images are uploaded over so ubuntu ubuntu is a linux based operating system right now its image is uploaded over here. docker official image this is an official image by docker right you can directly click on it and you can actually run this command in your computer if your computer has docker installed and you can just say docker pull ubuntu and the image of docker will be uh, now inside your computer now you can convert that image into a container so what is the difference between image and container when you want to ship your code from one place to another that is called an image and when you when you want to run it you need to convert that image into a container right so running state is called container and when your code is getting shipped that's called an image so you actually you can say that when you are opening a folder that's called a folder and when you try to send that folder to someone else you zip it or compress it then that compressed thing is called an image this is a simple explanation of image and container right so you can see what is docker hub right so now you are aware of docker hub also so this was all in the introduction of docker i did not go in devops i did not go in ci cd my main motive of making this video was to introduce you to docker what is docker in simple terms now you are clear with it right now it's your chance to go on the internet or youtube and you can watch multiple tutorials on docker right now you are clear with the basics fundamentals of docker now if you want me to teach you docker you can act you can obviously uh, put that in the comment section i'll try to make a detailed one or two hours video so i hope that you like this video till the next content keep coding keep innovating and thanks a lot